नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा Dear friends in Dhamma, dear venerable brother, so we were discussing uh, Brahmajala Sutta, and we almost covered uh, the various different kinds of wrong views, uh, which are talking of, of about the past. Now we discussed already that people sometimes are meditators and they have pubbe uh, nivasa no satyana who can reflect their past lives, and depending on how long that they can reflect. There are different kinds of sasatavad, uh, what we call the eternalism, and certain others actually are depending on their mere logic, their reasoning, and again they do some logical thinking, reasoning, and they also come to this kind of different uh, eternalist eternalist views. And again, a kind of sasatavad. Again, we discuss kind of partial eternalist eternalism and partial and uh, not eternalism and basically they are certain they sometimes say okay certain beings are eternal certain others are not eternal so they have some sort of a partial eternalism then we discuss about uh, anta anantavad so depending on the orientation depending on the space wise how long all this whole world exist either it is uh, depending on it's a kind of finite space or infinite space so likewise with respect to the uh, past lives they come up with various kind of definition different different kinds of views and then namara vikkepavada kind of endless hedging so they are without giving a proper answer so they do some sort of hedging and uh, there are also different four types of uh, wrong views we discussed and then aditya samuppannavada that is where uh, without giving a proper reason without giving causes so they uh, give some sort of a view telling that everything is happening by mere chance sort of fortuitous arising where there is no particular reason but immediately all of a sudden things are happening there is no reason a kind of chance is there kind of random chance is there so depending on that two views we have discussed almost actually we have covered the, those uh, 18 different views they are speculators about the past and they start then we started the uh, future related speculations speculators about the future and we already discussed about the sanyivada 18s of 18 or 16 of them we are uh they consider okay this uh, body will survive so the mind will survive and uh, it is going to have some sort of a post mortem survival even though the body perishes so there are the the consciousness may survive in the future and depending on whether it has a form or it does not have a, have a form so there are four such categories healthy and conscious and material healthy and conscious and uh, immaterial or both material and immaterial or neither material no immaterial so depending on the body there are four categories then we discuss whether this uh, survived consciousness is is it uh, finite or infinite both finite and infinite or neither finite nor infinite so then again another four is there and then since this is a we are talking about a sanyi that is conscious survival so this consciousness does it have some sort of perception is it with a uniform perception or varied kind of perception or limited perception unlimited perception so again another four categories are there and then it with respect to the feeling tone there are another four whether this uh, survived consciousness is it uh, happy unhappy uh, both happy and unhappy or neither happy nor unhappy so likewise all together there are 16 wrong views discussed under the 
sanjivad so everywhere the important thing here is that uh, talking about some, some sort of consciousness so this survived person whoever is conscious and then the other one another eight is they are non conscious even though the this uh, survival happens so so this survived being is very much unconscious doesn't have a sanya doesn't have a perception so therefore perception related for and the uh, feeling related for are not available if we discuss with respect to the previous 16 so therefore there are eight not available and then only eight available so with respect to the form material immaterial both neither then there are four and again uh, whether this uh, form is uh, finite infinite both finite and infinite neither finite nor infinite another four so altogether eight uh, non conscious survival which is talking about the future lives so uh, at the end of the death so this some sort of a survival is there but that survival is sort of non conscious and so they are coming up with eight now we already discuss all this and then uh, today we can start with the rest actually we need to understand another point that is uh, it is not that uh, everybody or each and every category someone is talking but here buddha is giving uh, all possibilities now 62 possibilities are there that doesn't mean that uh, during the buddha's time all these 62 existed but buddha through his knowledge through his understanding he is saying okay these are the possibilities either some one group may capture go through one of these kind of wrong view or many of these kinds of wrong views but other than this no more so that's another affirmation that buddha conduct buddha comes into where he affirm okay these are the possibilities and other than this we can't come up with another possibility so this is a very interesting area in the sense that uh, if we come up with any sort of a view then we can check whether it is included in this 62 if it is then it is a wrong view so in that way we, we have a complete comprehensive 62 wrong views and uh, whenever someone is talking about a particular view we can verify whether it is included in this 62 because these are the maximum these are the total views that ultimately a person can hold on to and then neva sanyi na sanyi vad neither conscious nor non conscious survival so this is very similar to the non conscious survival uh, in the sense that the, here the difference is the survived being is neither conscious nor non conscious so they also since it is uh, neither conscious nor non conscious so the perception part and the feeling tone part is not available so the what is available is some sort of a form which is after death it is healthy neither conscious nor non conscious and that form is material or that form is immaterial or that form is material and immaterial or neither material nor immaterial so likewise depending on the uh, the physical aspect there are four divisions four categories and then uh, whether this uh, uh, survived being is he antava that means he has certain limit or infinite there is no limit and both finite and infinite neither finite nor infinite so likewise there are eight altogether neither conscious nor unconscious neva sanyi na sanyi vada so these are another eight coming as a survival at the end of the life so there is a kind of a survival they are talking so there are eight categories and here also buddha mention okay so i have recognized all this i have understood the peril in it and uh, so i have gone beyond that i have understood more than this but even that i didn't grasp and uh, so that is i have seen what is more profound and uh, which is hard to see hard to understand more peaceful excellent 
which are beyond mere thought and only can be experienced by the wise and Vishta Tathagata having realized them by his own wisdom proclaims and about with about which those who would truthfully praise the Tathagata would rightly speak. Now here's another category, another group, another eight wrong views that Buddha mentioned, okay this I have understood and uh, I have gone beyond them and I understood if whoever uh, grasps any of these views may end up with this sort of a destination so I have understood that also and uh, without attaching to any of this without holding on to any of this I am completely liberated so basically uh, so after telling that okay this is something that uh, if people want to really praise the Buddha so this is one one possibility one important characteristic one profound aspect that Buddha to be praised. Probably you can remember the the story behind this whole thing where uh, two people start following Buddha and the Sangha while they are traveling from uh, Rajagaha to Nalanda and Supya and his uh, uh, student Brahmadatta. So Supya was actually completely talking ill of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha while on the other hand uh, Brahmadatta is trying to defend. He is talking about the uh, qualities of the Buddha. Now basically on these two aspects Buddha's advice to the monks is don't get upset, don't get worried or disheartened when someone is uh, blaming or uh, criticizing. You need to maintain a equanimous mind, a balanced mind and you can carefully recognize whether what they are talking is correct or wrong. Accordingly, you can give a comment, if possible. On the other hand, when someone is praising, don't get elated, don't get completely uplifted. If so, you can't properly recognize what they are talking. And if something is truly mentioned, available, then you can accept it. Yes, those are available, those are available qualities. Or otherwise you can simply say okay these are exaggerations these are not really available so likewise Buddha's advice is a kind of a mature way of looking at all these different accusations praises blames rather than getting uh, sort of agitated now with that respect Buddha is now explaining all these 62 different views based on them actually uh, people might uh, get into stuck in certain wrong views and on the other hand uh, whenever people are praising or blaming they are sometimes they are talking only about the uh, morality aspects the sealer but Buddha say okay they are that is not the real thing that Buddha to be praised but these a 62 views these are the sort of traps that even the spiritual people ultimately get hooked up ultimately get tangled. So these are the ones actually Buddha has seen his uh, uh, say noble wisdom and then he was able to overcome them, release from them and he's explaining them okay these are certain traps available in the spiritual path so don't get caught with them. So these are the points that he say okay worthy of paying respect. These are the things worthy of paying certain uh, say praise to the Buddha because he understood all these and without being caught up with them so he was able to release him release himself and then we get into the Uchchedavada so this, are, this is actually another interesting part we already discussed uh, briefly when we were discussing Udana Sutta now Uchchedavada annihilationism now Uchchedavada sato sattas uchchedam vinasam vibhavam panyapindi. So important thing here is that they accept an existing being. There is a being, there is a person, there is an individual. So after death, what's going to happen to this particular individual? What's going to happen to this soul? Now, one group is staying, saying, okay, uh, since this self is material, composed of four great elements the product of mother and father 
at the breaking of the body it is completely annihilated and perishes so they are sort of materialists not only they are talking about about annihilationism actually they are particularly materialist so they don't they don't talk about any mind and all that so they consider okay this body ultimately going to perish at the end of the death so therefore there is nothing more exist so whole thing get uh, annihilated does not exist after death so self is annihilated after the death so it's kind of even today many people are believing like that they don't believe in the future birth next birth uh, possibility of uh, other immaterial kind of uh, aspects continuing the sort of uh, wandering in sansara and sometimes they also get caught thinking that there's an existing self but these people who are materialists they simply say okay this body is uh, currently living but at the end of the death it's going to completely perish completely annihilate so this is one wrong view rupi chatu mahabhutiko so it is depending on the four elements this rupa this form and uh, it's going to end at the end of the death after the death there is no existence there is no survival and then another person is telling okay another say there is a self uh, as you say i don't deny it but that self is not wholly annihilated but there is a possibility that you can attain a divine material sense sphere uh, self which you need to attain and that actually uh, not particularly mentioned in this part but all these other six uh, annihilationist views are not immediately available you need to attain them you need to work hard you need to practice in order to attain to that one of them and as a result of that you are going to annihilate yourself now one important aspect of this category is that whoever the practitioners going through this practice they want to finish it they want to finish themselves they want to annihilate themselves so we'll come into that in later so uh, so one of them one, one group is telling okay there is a divine kind of uh, self existing and you need to practice and attain to that if so if you are able to do that then even though the body perishes this uh, this self is completely going to annihilate so therefore annihilation is some annihilation going to happen because you are able to attain that whatever the divine self and which is uh, still karma vachara is still uh, material belong to the sense sphere and uh, anyway since you are there ultimately after the death there is no existence the whole thing going to annihilate so is a wrong view which is available under the uchchedavad then other group is telling yes what you say is also true but whoever that that uh, divine material uh, sense sphere self is not going to annihilate you need to go beyond that if you are able to achieve a complete manomaya uh, sort of uh, self which is uh, mind made completely mind made divine self if you are able to attain that so that is the way to annihilate yourself so they are talking about another wrong view then the next one they are saying okay uh, another self which is by passing entirely beyond bodily sensations now they are going to the arupa to the immaterial we are entirely beyond bodily sensations by the disappearance of all the sense resistance and by not at non attraction to the perception of diversity they are going to merge with the infinity infinity of space what we call the akasa nanchayatana one needs to practice hard and they have to attain the akasa nanchayatana so when you are able to attain that 
after the death there is no existence because this self going to annihilate even though the body perishes this particular self that is akash where your self is now attain akash anand chaitanya so that is going to annihilate another one is saying no it is not enough you need to attain the vinyana chaitanya sphere of infinite consciousness if you are able to attain that then you are able to annihilate yourself another one is telling no that is also not enough you need to go to nothingness that is the akinchanya ayatana if you are able to attain that after the breaking of of body so this self is going to annihilate so the whole thing going to annihilate another one is telling the sixth, seventh one you can understand in the same order okay uh, you need to attain the neva sanyana sanya ayatana then only you are able to completely annihilate yourself now as i mentioned earlier so the important thing as vendabal bikwanaleo highlights here is that uh, all these are attained through a particular mode of practice particular mode of conduct you can't immediately come to a sort of a mundane even jhana you need to practice for that even if you want to attain any kind of arupa jhana you need to practice the very first one is simply a materialism so you don't need to practice anyway that's a very first uh, annihilationist view but all the other six are depending on the practice depending on the meditation so one needs to practice and then only one is able to attain a divine self maybe a complete unlimited space that is the akasha nanchayata related self vinyana anchayata related self akin chanyata related self neva sanya na sanyata related self now all are different kinds of uh, jhani attainments but these people believe okay if i am able to attain that i am going to annihilate and his wish is also to at- annihilate himself probably they have found okay living in this world is difficult or all these troubles are there i am getting sick and all that problems are there if after the death i am going to completely annihilate so then everything is finished everything is will end so they have a particular theme as we previously also discussed may i not be may i not be for me may it not be for me i shall not be and it will not be for me what is called no chas no chasang no chamesia na bhavisami na me bhavisa bhavisanti iti bhavisati iti so particularly they have this kind of a motto okay all this let it not available for me may i not be may it not be for me whatever resources whatever this body whatever perceptions may may it not be for me so that means let it completely annihilate at the death i shall not be and it will not be for me so whatever belonging to me let everything perish everything disappear everything annihilate at the death nothing will going to exist complete annihilation is now this is the kind of a motto they have so they have such a wish so they are promoting that but the one first group is telling okay it is happening automatically because nothing exists other than this material form so therefore at the end of after the death nothing exists so it is anyway annihilated materialism and then starting with wrong view 52 to 57 all that requires certain amount of practice while keeping that motto in their mind okay they are practicing so assume that they attain this uh, so called uh, uh, say um, divine kind of uh, sense fear self and then they say okay going to annihilate possible to annihilate now someone says okay it is not enough you need to attain uh, manomaya mental divine self mind made self so then only you are able to annihilate yourself another one is saying that is also not enough you need to attain the akasha nanchayatana giving up all the material uh, rupee 
body related sensations you need to go beyond that and all the sense resistance has to be disappeared whatever the impingements coming through senses you have to go away from that so that's how you are going to attain the say akasa nanchayatana if you are able to do that then yes you are going to annihilate yourself another group is saying that is also not, not enough you need to get into the vinyana nanchayatana that is the infinite consciousness then you are able to annihilate to yourself another group is saying that is also not enough you need to attain to akin chanyayatana then you are able to annihilate to yourself the last group is saying okay you need to attain neither perception nor non perception ah neva sanya na sanyayatana if so you are able to attain annihilate to yourself now these are the seven ways that uh, annihilationism can come up now all are the possibilities so whoever talking about annihilationism they have to adhere to one of them and buddha affirms okay there is nothing beyond this these are the seven possibilities these are the maximum one either they have to go through accept one of these or many of these nothing more than this so that's a in a way very important part because if there is something more then we have to invent but buddha affirms okay these are the seven possibilities with respect to annihilationism there is nothing more th- about this more than this and i have seen it i have understood all this and i didn't grasp any of these and uh, i have gone beyond this and i have understood more than this which is more profound hard to see difficult to understand peaceful excellent one can't come to that by mere thought mere reasoning and it has to be understood by the wise and which the buddha has understood by himself and then he is explaining that proclaiming that and uh, that is something profound that truthfully if one wants to uh, praise the buddha this is something very important valuable noble characteristics that the buddha to be praised as i mentioned the important thing here also so they are believing of an existing self existing person existing i existing individual so that individual is the one going to completely annihilate that individual if completely material then they, it is going to annihilate because there is no any other mental aspect another seven group uh, six groups is telling okay this individual has to practice and has to attain some sort of a divine uh, mental state using which he can annihilate himself so existing self is always emphasized there is an existing self there is a individual there is a person there is i so that is the underneath the wrong perception in a way available in all these different uh, uh, wrong views okay and then we can go to the last part which is coming under the aparanta kapika speculators about the future now in this path in this part actually they are talking about supreme nirvana here and now this is also interesting because as buddhists we are also talking about nibbana here and now this group is also talking about nibbana here and now important difference is here also they are talking about an existing person existing individual and that individual how he is going to attain nibbana existing individual sato sattassa parama ditta dhamma nibbana panya pinti so this a uh, uh, very noble or we can say uh, complete completely available nibbana complete cessation and uh, it's available right now in this very life to this particular existing person sato satta so existing person is there existing being is there so that existing being going to attain nibbana so this is how they are explaining now so the wrong view 58 panchahi kamagunehi samappito 
samangibhuto parichari now he is also some sort of a materialist so he is taking okay if he is able to satisfy himself to the maximum so if it is he is able to satisfy his senses basically he has eye using eye he can see all different sceneries so that he can satisfy himself gratify himself he has ears he can listen to beautiful music and with that he can pacify himself satisfy himself and then he has nose using which he can smell pleasant odors as much as possible he has a tongue using which he can taste various delicacies and he has the body using which he can go through all the possible luxurious sensations and that is how he is going to attain nibbana in this very life so certain people even today they are following like that so that is their main goal okay as much as possible i need to satisfy myself satisfy my body satisfy my senses simply following the pleasure principle so that is what is mostly available in the west we are simply believe in this materialism as much as possible satisfying senses maybe even the with, with the expense of the others comfort somehow they are want to satisfy themselves and that they consider as the okay this is the maximum i can get in this life this is an ibban in this very life so this one wrong view and the one another thing is that these people not only they believe in it they also teach it to the others they spread that wrong view to the others and then uh, another wrong view someone is saying so the, there is such a self as you say i don't deny it but that is not where the self realizes the highest nibbana here and now why because this uh, sense desires are impermanent painful and subject to change and it may transform and arise sorrow lamentation all that problems that means this body related satisfaction is not something permanent it can change it can even take you certain worries it can cause you lamentation so you can't depend on that so that is not the parama nibbana that is not the supreme kind of nibbana you can attain in this very life rather when this self detached from sense desires detached from unwholesome states enters and abides in the first jhana now they are talking about jhana so they are our medit they are meditators okay they simply say okay this mere sense gratification is not enough if you want to attain nibbana you need to practice and there is something called first jhana you need to attain that first jhana we are you need to abandon all the sense pleasures sense desires temporarily you need to subside them and you need to practice as a result of the practice you have a particular state of mind which has the applied thought vitakka is available you have the sustained mind vichara is available and though your mind is somewhat pleasurable and somewhat elated somewhat satisfied so you are going through certain amount of happiness and mind is well uh, say concentrated so these five qualities are there vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata five jhana angas are there so one has attained the first jhana so this is how you are going to attain the nibbana so be, they basically consider first jhana as the nibbana and then another group is saying okay that is not enough first jhana is not the real nibbana because it has certain uh, say drawbacks because again and again your mind has to attain to that whatever the object and uh, again the mind has to maintain sustain again and again with that object so this is a uh, friction these are drawbacks this is not good this is not enough so you need to overcome even that you need to abandon that vitak abandon that applied mind you need to just fix your mind without going doing any sort of a uh, uh sustain sustenance other the mind has to be completely fixed 
and uh, so the jhana has to be further <coughs> concentrated more deep and uh, so you need to attain the second jhana by abandoning vitakka and vichara abandoning thinking or rather the thinking we can say applied mind and the uh, sustained mind you need to abandon those two which are more into the hindrances so you need to abandon that after abandoning that you can attain the second jhana that is more sublime and more fixed there is a more inner tranquility is available oneness of the mind is available and so that is the nibbana so they consider second jhana as the nibbana <coughs> so that becomes their goal again and again they are attaining that again and again they are abiding in, in it associating in it even in this life so they they say okay this is the nibbana i can attain in this very life there's another wrong view that buddha explained here and then the next one now you can understand the next one also they are talking about okay this rapture available in the second jhana whatever the delight whatever the happiness pleasure available in the second jhana is somewhat uh, acceleration some amount of friction is there that is some gross sort of happiness is there you need to abandon that so if you are able to abandon that then you are attaining the third jhana which is more sublime and fair amount of uh, contentment is there so more mature kind of happiness previous one the second jhana is somewhat uh, gross but here it is more sublime more soft and more contentment is available more maturity is there and this is the ditta dhamma nibbana tatiyan jhana upasampajja vihirati ettavata ko bho ayang atta parama ditta dhamma nibbana patto in this very life one can attain nibbana by attaining the third jhana so this is the wrong view this particular group can have and of course the last one the 60 second wrong view is talking about the fourth jhana they say okay the, even the third jhana is not good because whatever that happiness that joy that is also somewhat gross you need to even alleviate that you need to even abandon that keep the mind in complete equanimity complete calmness complete balance without getting into any of the extremes any of the sides of pleasure and pain so you need to completely abandon pleasure and pain the mind has to be in the complete equilibrium in the equanimity that is the nibbana so they are talking about the fourth jhana as the nibbana now after explaining all this uh, seven all this five actually buddha again mention okay buddha has understood all this these monks are those other matters profound hard to see and people can get trapped even today in this certain people sometimes they simply sit to attain attain uh, whatever the jhana and they consider that is their bliss that is their escape and that is the nibbana that is the complete freedom because they can cut off from the whole world while they are in the jhana they can't feel much they don't need to know about whatever the the societal problems whatever the family problems whatever the worldly problems they don't have to worry about them because they are in the complete kind of a trance completely attain ab- absorbed into a jhana is a completely blissful state of mind uplifted state of mind and so the while they are there so they are completely away from the world so they consider that as the nibbana which is available in this very life and uh, buddha say okay i have understood the peril in it i have understood the drawbacks in all these wrong views i have gone beyond this and whoever proclaiming this sort of wrong view and adhering to it and ultimately they what's going to happen after death that also i know say for example if someone has attained the first jhana and he is uh, really happy with it 
again and again attain to it really find it as a sort of a treasure and mastering it maybe at the end of the death he can attain the brahma realm depending on the depth they can either go to the lower first jahanic brahma realm second or third and uh, but the unfortunate thing is it is not permanent because whatever the defilements whatever the sense pleasures what they have abandoned are all temporary so complete suppression kind of a temporary suppression what they have done so at the end of that particular life span again he has to return to a lower realm maybe to a sense pleasure sense related uh, divine realm or even beyond that to the human realm and then it is not guaranteed what's going to happen to him he may end up with even after the death here he might even go to the hell realm so all these solutions are not in a way giving a permanent solution so they are all temporary suppression of the defilements now after having all understood so buddha mentioned okay buddha has understood all this abandoned that knowledge completely liberated and this is something that if one want to truly praise him this is a sublime quality that buddha to be praised important thing again we, what we need to understand is that uh, say only a very minority that people are getting involved with spiritual practice but majority of them get trapped in any of these wrong views so that is where the buddha's sort of uh, direction buddha's guidance is very important so his whatever the task is really praiseable because he was able to understood all these tanglements now he is explaining okay these are the 62 possibilities check whether you are trapped in any of these if so you are trapped you are not liberated and these are in a way are traps laid by the mara now people are already trapped when they are completely indulged in the sense pleasures they are completely obsessed by it so they are already trapped they are under the realm in the of the mara but whoever want to escape from that they are now going through some spiritual achievement but unfortunately they are also trapped in these 62 either one or many of these 62 wrong views all these 62 wrong views are also certain traps we can say laid by the mar so 62 wrong views are awaiting in a way to trapped to get sort of attracted so I, when we are continuing our practice so in a way these are sort of pitfalls we can get on to we can drop into we can fall into and these are very much like traps available kept by the mara for the spiritual people and uh, after explaining all these 44 44 uh, speculation with respect to the future again with the highlights okay these are the possibilities with respect to the future existence future life and i have understood all these 44 possibilities nothing more than this so all together 62 nothing more than this so all these view points with the understood but he didn't grasp any of this and he knows and uh, he is not attached to any of this he is completely liberated from this and uh, these are the important things that buddha to be praised these are the profound and in a way difficult hard to understand only possible to understand by the wise so these are the traps that buddha has penetrated buddha has understood really well so understand so realizing that okay he is proclaiming the path so that others also can go through others also can overcome all these wrong views so this is something that if we want to really truthfully praise the buddha this is something sublime that buddha to be praised actually typical people don't know about this typical people don't know the depth of this whoever spiritual guy 
talking of this and whoever proclaiming any of this sometimes those typical other uninstructed worldlings are blindly following say for example one meditator assume that he has he may attain some sort of a jhana and then and he say okay i am attain nibbana so this this particular jhana this particular concentration is so sublime so uh say blissful okay and now i am able to attain that okay i am i have achieved it i have attained that and even so these people simply proclaim that to the others they simply even explain that to the others others also start following that so that's the that's the kind of uh, danger in a way not only they themselves get trapped not only they themselves start believing it but even they start uh, spreading it even they start talking about it explaining it and many others start following it now he has many followers now he is spreading that particular wrong view and many many others are blindly following it probably they haven't yet achieve it but they are they also may trying hard to achieve it and probably you can remember few examples say during the buddha's time uh, that uh, alara kalam who has attained the nothingness and he considered that as the nibbana uddakarama putta he has attained neva sanyana sanyayatana and he considered that as the nibbana and here actually the fourth jhana can include all those arupa jhana as well so arupa jhana sa different flavors of fourth jhana and uh, so they consider that as the nibbana but the buddha to be the the prince siddhartha so he he didn't believe it he he was not satisfied with it and he understood okay this is not the nibbana i have to go beyond this and certain others sometimes they they even start lamenting after losing the jhana because they consider okay this is a real achievement i have to be there i have to dwell in that so this is the complete emancipation whenever they get sick they can't achieve it so they start even lamenting so even such stories are there so likewise uh whatever attainments whatever meditative attainments and after attaining attach into that or after attaining reflecting on that and coming up with a conclusion and and then adhering to a view prepared based upon that experience all the possibilities that's why we we'll, we get into another session kind of a analysis of all this uh and we have some more to discuss uh anyway now all the 62 views are briefly discussed and we have completed that and we'll have a few more sessions what buddha giving as solutions to overcome this and again what other suttas are talking about the wrong views consequences of wrong views we have another few more sessions and with that i like to conclude today's sutta teaching session now i open the session for questions yeah you have okay there is a question coming from venerable dharma vijita so we we'll listen to him <coughs> thank you bhante thank yeah. you for the teaching um a couple of things came to mind uh, one is that all these views are based on a self mm. that's um so that's already a misconception that the buddha proved Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's what the uh, one important thread in each and every view is that they are believing of a existing self, existing individual, existing person. I, I am. So something that is very much like accepted. So by based on that, either they are talking up of eternalism, partial eternalism, or maybe future existence, survival, all that. of that self mm-hmm. true for the even the annihilation of that self yeah. even the annihilation 
thinking okay there is an existing self that that self is going to annihilate mm. isn't it yeah so so that's a difference actually we need to understand clearly but according to the buddha's teaching what he's telling is these are okay the uh, these are five aggregates they have certain causes to each and every aggregate so when these causes are available so these aggregates are coming and disappearing appearing and disappearing appearing and disappearing appearing and disappearing it's a kind of momentary momentary kind of a flow momentary process going on even to the material aspect immaterial aspect the form aggregate feeling aggregate perception aggregate formation aggregate consciousness aggregate each and every aggregate they have their contributing parts contributing causes whenever those causes are available okay instances so the moments of these aggregates are come into existence within a moment they disappear next moment also the causes have to come in then again existence then again the appearance of the five aggregates again the disappearance yeah. it's a kind of a momentary appearance and disappearance momentary arising and passing away that is how the whole continuum go going through Mm-hmm. so in this completely transient process so that's how we can argue in this completely transient process how can there be an eternal soul how can there be an eternal i existing i existing person existing individual mm-hmm. so so whatever the form is coming and going arising and passing away feelings arising and passing away perceptions arising and passing away say whatever thoughts intentions arising and passing away consciousness also arising and passing away so that's why buddha say without taking any of these atta natta this either existence or non existence so i am i am talking about the teaching from the middle when there is this this is going to arise with the absence of this this is not going to arise that is the part is sound part the depending dependent origination so nothing is completely independent everything happens due to causes is completely rejecting this adicca samuppannavad you know there are two wrong views adicca samuppannavad we are uh, they are talking about mere chance that completely rejected instead of he is talking about the part is samuppanna things are dependent dear reason dependent dear reason so when this exists this is also going to exist when this uh, with the arising of this this is also going to arise mm-hmm. so it's a kind of dependent dear reason process every time going on yeah. so when the when the ignorance is available there's a possibility of formations to arise with the arising of ignorance formations are also arising but if there is no ignorance there can't be formations with the cessation of ignorance formations also going to cease now on the other hand we can simply argue using a simile given by the buddha say you are maintaining a fire there are fire wood available so you need oxygen you need the fire wood the heat everything is available then the fire continues but the moment that you kept them aside and you extinguished the fire so then the the necessary causes are not available and the flames will simply extinguish that's it so the flames were existed because the necessary causes were continuously supplied isn't it oxygen oxygen was supplied fuel was supplied air was there and everything those causes are available continuously so the fire existed but when the causes are abandoned causes are taken away so the fire can't exist fire simply dis- extinguish isn't it yeah and one can't ask okay where the fire has gone <laughs> it's an irrelevant question isn't it because the fire is a mere condition process it was dependent on those causes and then the when the causes are abandoned when the causes were causes were taken out the result also will disappear yeah 
Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. Um, and um, I guess the fire would we could say that's the what we consider to be the self. That self. Lust. And this fire aggregates. Fire aggregates. Fire, fire is simply the fire aggregate. Mm. There is nothing inside the fire. If someone is telling, okay, there is some soul inside the fire, so these are mere, you know, mere, mere fabrication. So when when we are talking about these fire aggregates, if someone is taking, telling, okay, inside the fire aggregates there is an existing self, that's a kind of a fabrication. That's the, a, not I, aggregate, so like the firewood. Firewood and the oxygen and all that causes are there. Mm-hmm. The aggregates are like the fire, the flame. The result. Once we cling to them, it, they that that is the cause. Cause is the tanha, the craving. Yes. So till the craving is there, the fire will go through. So the upadana, the clinging. Yes. So the you know the upadana term has one meaning as the fuel, another meaning as the clinging. <laughs> Fuel and clinging, clinging. are clinging. So basically, when you are clung to something, so that becomes the fuel for continuation. Yeah. Ba- the upadana pachya bahu. So when you are clinging to something, when you are grasping to something, you feel the, f- you feel kind of an existence. I am, I am there. I am existing. I am here. I am so and so. So the wrong notion of existence come to being when clinging happens, when grasping happens. But if we are able to maintain a mind without clinging, without grasping, then such a mind can't feel an existence of an I, existence of a person. The life may continue, he may eat, he may go, he may talk, but not being a person, but merely a process is continuing. Something like that. Yes. That's what. That's how I understood, and according to the teaching, I feel. Uh, so that is the way that Buddha is talking here. So when when uh, the necessary causes are there, there's a notion of uh, there's a possibility of consciousness to get established. One, when there are no causes, when the ignorance is abandoned, so this particular consciousness can't establish. Say, Vijnana Pachya Nama Rupa. Say, Avijja Pachya Sankhara Sankhara Pachya Vijnana Vijnana Pachya Nama Rupa. Say, when the ignorance is there, it conditions formations. When formations are available, it conditions the consciousness to get tangled with the name and form. Suppose, Instead of ignorance, if the mind has wisdom, so then ignorance is not available, then the formations can't activate. So the mind becomes, you know, ceased, mind, the consciousness becomes ceased, the formations are not available, so the name and form can't manifest. So the consciousness has to cease, it has to become unestablished. Calmness, tranquility, so the mind becomes unestablished. So this is how we can uh, understand according to the teaching, and uh, so that's it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. And um, also, it's you know the Buddha is explaining these views and how they lead to uh, bad destination, uh, how they are not true. Mm. Uh, but also the the people who are holding these views. Just by their own presence, you would know that it was a wrong view. Mm. That they're saying, you know, that this is a, a a way to follow. This my view is correct. It's it's um, it's good. If you were to observe that person, they yeah. they would show that just by their actions that they're still attached to. Uh, Defilements and mm. yeah, definitely. So, so, just by seeing the person and observing the person, you can see that their view is wrong. That they're not somebody to follow. I'm not following you because oh. someone is making a noise. Rohan, you are making a noise. 
Can you repeat the question? Yes, I I guess um, the Buddha explains intellectually or theoretically um, why the views aren't true. But if we were to see one of the people that are that is holding the view, you mm. could obviously see that this person is not like the ascetics that were following the Buddha mm -hmm. and the uh, Supiya was uh -huh. their leader. He was looking at his ascetics and they were just arguing, like, dish, you mm -hmm. know, just not, uh, you know, didn't look like they were at peace mm -hmm. or uh, secure. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, you can see that these people aren't following the right path. Mm -hmm. They're not, um, you wouldn't trust them. Mm -hmm to follow them mm -hmm. because they're yeah. not uh, sublime they're mm -hmm. not uh, they haven't let go of defilements correct and so forth correct I mean whenever someone is adhering to a view there is of course that the, the two padana is there as well as, as, well as the silabhata upadana also can into come and again the attavata upadana also can can cause what, me, what I mean was say when someone is adhering to a view he may start following certain rituals he may start following certain observances and even sometimes he preach those observances to the others and uh, he want to protect that view he want to guard that view and he want to highlight that view yeah. because that that highlight that prom promotion can promote a self so this is my view so i am the teacher i am the one going to teach this view i am the one correctly knowing all others views are wrong my views is correct so the Attavada Upadana also coming to be. Attavada Upadana means you recognize yourself as a person, as an individual, as a self. So that's another grasping, another Upadana. So the Ditti Upadana can Ditti Upadana can lead to Attavada Upadana also. Ditti Upadana, whenever someone is holding on to a view, yeah. automatically there's a possibility that, okay, I am having this view, Okay, I need to attack someone's views. That is not correct. My view is correct. So that he he is believing an existing I also. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. So they always uh, certain existence of an I, myself, individual personality is yes. there. So all the argumentation and so forth of these people holding views is also a proof that they are clinging to clinging to something, something. clinging yes. to clinging to some sort of a self. Yeah. As an individual, as a person, they want to protect themselves, they want to protect their view, their viewpoint, and they want to reject someone else's view, look down someone else's view. Mm -hmm. So the arguments, conflicts, all that is possible. Probably you can remember when uh, in the Madhupindika Sutta, when Dandapani, the Shakyan, and when he came and asked from the Buddha, what is your view? <laughs> then Buddha say, okay, my my view is simply in a way not get into any arguments with others. Can't have any quarrels, can't have any arguments and the, more than that there are some certain very sophisticated ones he is telling, okay, none of the perceptions go and uh, go and uh, sort of uh, remain in the mind someone's, what you call sanya nanu senti the certain perceptions, certain signs, marks may not remain in the mind. They simply come and go without making a permanent uh, permanent scar, permanent uh, kind of a em embodiment. They simply go away. So the mind, mind has to be completely freed. Yes. Completely freed and that freedom when someone is ex uh, enjoying, experiencing, so he can't argue. He yeah. can't defend. Because there is no one to defend. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So Buddha really exemplified this non-clinging. Non he never went to argue with anybody. Argue with yeah. But the interesting thing is sometimes that... Sometimes he didn't even reply when people argued. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so sometimes people came and argued with him. Yeah. And sometimes he had to convince others. Yeah. Now say for example uh, in the Mahavagga, Say uh, that uh, ascetics, the Jatilas are there, the Uruvela Kasapa, Nadi Kasapa, Kaya Kasapa. So they are ascetics and they believe that they are Arahans. 
So Buddha has to convince them. He has to preach and he has to even show certain miracles to convince them. And certain other times say, sometimes people come and argue with him like such a he can he come and start debating with him. But in general Buddha came became silent or simply, you know, uh, whoever coming and asking, he can simply preach, but maintain that silent sermon. Without purposely going and going after people to argue. Yeah. So we can use this in a way to conduct ourselves mm. to see, you know, can we just be calm and not going out going to out. attack exactly in any way, mm. um, and also to see if somebody's attacking us, we don't have to respond mm. or to you know, make a argument for ourselves or something, can just let it go. Yeah, that's as uh, here also happening. So as Buddha is advising here, when someone is criticizing, so if we feel uh, disgusted, if we feel disparaged, yeah. so then again we, 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 we our mind becomes imbalanced. Yeah. So when someone is blaming, someone is criticizing, are we able to maintain a balanced mind? That's a, again a kind of an opportunity that we can you know, use to verify our practice. Yeah. So, are we are we capable enough to maintain a untroubled mind? Yeah. Isn't it? Even yes. when someone is criticizing. Yes. On the other hand, when someone is praising, without being you know boosted ourselves, boosted an ego, are we able to still maintain an equanimous mind? It's a kind of a mature way of you know going through the life situations. Yeah, I think. I think there's a way we could practice this is because, you know, my tendency is to take things personally, mm -hmm. feel attacked mm. sometimes. So uh, re knowing, like going into a situation where you might feel attacked, mm. just say to yourself, maybe uh, don't respond quickly. <laughs> exactly. Because what we tend to do is, yeah. I mean, if we're feeling that way, is we want to respond very quickly mm. and defend ourselves. Mm. So uh, just uh, taking a moment, pausing, being mm. mindful of exactly. the body. And, exactly. And then uh, <laughs> uh, not having that. Uh, not impulsively react. Yes, yeah. because as soon as we react, then mm. there is a, we've created a self, we've, we've uh, uh, sort of attached mm. to some belief yeah. Like the other's belief. Yeah. Whenever we want to defend, so that 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 shows that there is a person here. So I, that person being attacked. Yes. We take it for per, we we take it the whole thing as a personal personal experience, personal attack. Yes. So he's attacking me. Yes. So that that's that's how we take it. So as that's why in a certain other place that Buddha say, okay, if you have no upadhi. If you have no acquisitions to boost a self, if you have no acquisitions to prepare a self, then where are these attacks going to hit? Something like that. So mm -hmm. when Nirupadi, when when one is in the Nirupadi state, there are no acquisitions. So then he he doesn't feel a person here. Then he don't feel an attack also. A very very I mean very high high model in a way high teaching. As we, I mean, neva atato no parato dahiya pusanti passa upading paticha nirupading ke na pusayyum passa. Gami aranye sukadukka putto neva atato no parato dahita pusanti passa upading paticha nirupading ke na pusayyum passa. So that the advice given in the one of the udanas. So Buddha say okay to the monks. So when you are in the monastery, when you are in the outside city, when someone is criticized, don't consider the situation as me and others, me and outsiders. Neva atato no parato. Me and not me. Don't consider like that. Pusanti passa upadi impaticha. All these, you know, impingements happen when acquisitions are available. Acquisitions in the sense say you have created a created the self using various attributes. Okay, I am a monk. 
I am a respectable person. I am a senior monk. Oh, I am a follower of the Buddha. I am so and so. I am a rich person. I am an educated person. Uh, I am a king. I am a queen. Whatever you know that. Mm. So these are the selves that we have created yes. using various acquisitions, using maybe our education, maybe our religion, maybe our meditation, maybe our understanding, maybe our social situation, social state. Our, our our relatives, our children. So, using many different attributes, one can create a self. Now, whenever we being hurt, that is because that whatever the impingements coming from the outside are hitting any of these created attributes. Mm -hmm. So now, Buddha is telling nirupa ding kena pusayum pasa. If there is no such upadis. When one is able to completely abandon the acquisitions, then where are these impingements going to hit? No place to hit. <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting teaching. So he's giving us the most, you know, perfect way. Solution is the four noble truths. Mm. You know, mm. correct, correct. Suffering and it arises because because of, of certain causes, clinging. Yes. Mm. If you are able to abandon that clinging, okay. You're free. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> yeah, you, Bhante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, yeah. teaching. Yeah. We can come to your side, uh, Jennifer. Right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite Geshan for the next question. Hello, Anshan, my Bhante. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. Yes, uh, yes. I really enjoy the, the discussion with them, uh, which is uh, uh, there are quite a bit of uh, uh, good points that uh, sort of uh, surface as well, you know. Uh, you were talking about uh, uh, some of the uh, things that not only came in the Madhupindika Sutra uh, that I can sort of relate to, uh, the phrase Sanya Nyanusanti, uh, mm. I have heard that in the Anapanasati Sutra as well, and um, it, uh, it is so fascinating. Uh, one of the when uh, when I start listening to this uh, discussion, um, I was thinking, you know, like uh, how profound Buddha was, just even to go into that minute detail mm -hmm. to talk about how these uh, signals comes to us, and then how we grasp and without thinking that they are like a mirage or a, you know, miringua in Singhala. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I thought uh, I, I should sort of bring that particular instant because of uh, Dhamma Vijita, Venerable Dhamma Vijita's discussion as well. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that I wanted to uh, ask uh, from this series, uh, the wrong views. Um, I think uh, it, it's, it's, if I'm not wrong, it's 51 or 52. Uh, it talks about four elements uh, where our body is made from mother and the father. And uh, but it doesn't. Does it sort of talk about the consciousness there? Because uh, I think uh, that itself is that the reason why it becomes a wrong view because. Uh, we believe uh, that our body is made only from four elements. Four elements. Well, when we are talking about the the body, typically it is considered the you know uh, what is coming from the mother and father, and again coming from the kabalinkara yes. ahar, the material food. So all that what ultimately the body being uh, constructed, prepared. As you see that in the for example, uh, one uh, uh, one view of uh, Uchedavada, so they simply consider this body is what existing. There is no mental aspect. 
so if there is that is totally dependent on the body so without a body these mental aspects can't exist no? so anyway at the after the death this whole body going to perish going to disappear this body is made up of the four elements and uh, so this body going to vanish so therefore this whole self going to annihilate so that is one wrong view uh, which they are talking about the uh, uchchedavada that is the 51st wrong view this self is material composed of the four great elements product of mother and father and at the end of the breaking of the body that the after the death nothing exists going to annihilate yes, yes. that's what i remember yeah yeah okay so uh, he doesn't he doesn't address the consciousness there right? it doesn't particularly mention yes, but if even if it is there what they say is okay it is totally dependent on the body now even today certain scientists they say like that okay the consciousness is there but it's a product of the brain you can't have a consciousness without the brain so say so for at the okay. death the the brain the body going to perish body going to disappear so the consciousness also going to completely disappear so they can they are talking about the uchchedavad annihilation itself very good mm-hmm. so uh, there is uh, i think uh, even with the ask from his uh, first disciple like uh, one of the monks uh, can consciousness exist without nama rupa mm-hmm. uh, or and vice versa as well right so i was thinking so for name and form of course those are the four elements that has comes together and with that we or i become exists i guess mhm so that is actually that we are talking of the part part is saupad so the name and form and consciousness are in a kind of a tangle in a kind of a interrelationship the consciousness conditions name and form name and form conditions consciousness and uh, it's a kind of mutual relationship is there for all this to happen the ignorance has to be available ignorance causes conditions ignorance causes fabrications and when the fabrications are available the consciousness can establish with the name and form actually name and form can't appear without fabrications without ignorance suppose the mind is now at least temporary free from ignorance then the mind has to stop all the formations the sabba sankhara samatha has to happen even at a short period so the mind has to stop all the formations because only when ignorance is available the formations going to happen if there is no ignorance the formations has to completely cease mind has to stop the consciousness has to cease so we can say at that moment the it becomes anidassana it doesn't represent anything it doesn't show anything it completely become kind of luminous or transparent so no name and form is visualized no name and form is manifested and so the consciousness is not tangled in name and form so that means the absence of the conditioned consciousness abhisankata vijnana the conditioned consciousness prepared consciousness established consciousness is not more not available but the unmanifested one say uh what we call the kind of transparent consciousness is continuing but that we can't say is something conditioned anidassana vijnana appatittita vijnana so these are the terms that we are using into the a supramundane side where the mind become completely luminous transparent no name and form is uh, you know visualized no name and form is present so there is no any kind of a manifestation of a being of a person just a mere experience is there 
and uh, say mm, mind is not tangled at anywhere it's kind of freed freed mind so is that the i think uh, what i have understood also in that free uh, mind state uh, where uh, no thoughts are being sort of uh, generated on and then you also mentioned uh, there is the the way that i understood there is a, a sort of a shadow mm-hmm. uh, always last sort of goes behind uh, but it's it's like the secondary sort of formations but it just uh, like moves away like the clouds per se mm-hmm. now i think uh, i like to explain this at uh, two different way so one way is that when someone is uh, not attain the arahantship but the defilements are completely uh, uprooted so uh, an arahant is simply maintaining his day to day awareness as explained in the uh, sona sutta so selo yatha uh, ekagano vatena na samirati evang rupa rasa sadda ganda pansa ch kevala इट्ठा धम्म अनिट्ठा च नपवेदिदिदादिनो तितां चित्तां विपमुत्तां वयं चस्सानु पस्सति एस इन द सोन सुत्त व्या ही मेंशन ओके हिज माइंड इज अनवेवरिंग हिज माइंड इज वेरी मच स्टेबल इवन दो साइट साउंड स्मेल्स टेस्ट टेंजिबल्स थॉट्स आर हैपनिंग दे कांट मेक एनी काइंड ऑफ शिफ्ट ऑफ दिस माइंड दे कांट मेक एनी turbulence in this mind so his mind is completely tranquil completely peaceful without getting entangled without getting tangled with any of these sense impingements titam chittam so the mind is completely stable stilled vipamuttam liberated from all the defilements vayan chassanu pasadi so whatever these sense impingements happening so he can see how they are coming and going arising and passing away arising and passing away so this is the typical uh, state of the arahant when he is not in an attainment but on the other hand when he is in the arahantship or what we can say the attainment of arahantship arahatta pala samadhi there we can say he is uh, experiencing it to the supreme level where the mind is completely unestablished no, all the six sense bases are uh, ceased and the consciousness is completely unestablished and uh, say uh he's ex- he's simply being in the nibbana so padi says an nibbana in its supreme form where the six sense bases are ceased so the consciousness is completely unestablished no name and form available so the mind has come to the complete rest that is explained in the say in the in the uh, what's this uh, say in the kevadda sutta vijnanam anidassanam anantam sabbato pabham yatha apocha patavi tejo vayo nagadati so they are so where the mind has come to that uh, complete calmness tranquility stillness so that typical vijnana is no more typical condition consciousness is no more instead the complete clarity of the mind unestablished state of the mind is experienced thank you pante yeah yeah um it was very nicely sort of talk about but uh, i have to uh, check on this kevadda sutra as well yeah kevadda sutra kevadda sutta coming in the diga nikaya the last verse available there it's a deep sutta and uh, this this is a kind of a debatable area even that particular verse very good thank you so much uh, yeah. tunuran charanai bhakti
Ya, ya, dengan sanai. Thank you. Uh, but I don't believe there's no more questions on our side. Right. Okay. Then uh, there is no more questions from our side also. Then we'll wind up the session. So we have spent one and a half hours discussing Buddha's teachings and few suttas. And all this may cause to generate some merits. We'll share all these merits with celestial beings, uh, past relatives and whoever in need of merits. And we wish these merits help us also to attain path fusion nibbana we'll recite the traditional verses etavata ca amhe hi sambatang punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya etavata ca amhe hi sambatang punya sampadam sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya etavata ca amhe hi sambatang punya sampadam Sabbe satthan modantu sampe sampatti siddhiya Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhantu mamparang Idango nyati nang hotu sukita hum tunateo Idango nyati nang hotu sukita hum tunateo Idango nyati nang hotu sukita hum tunateo Imina punya kame ne mame bala samagamo Satang samagamo hotu yava nibbana patia Imina punya kame na mame bala samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu yava nibbana patiya Imina punya kame na mame bala samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu yava nibbana patiya Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu Thank you, Kante. Teruan Sanai. Teruan Sanai.